Hey guys, Gadget Insane here. In my hands is the new Samsung Galaxy Nexus, the first phone running the new Android 4.0 operating system, affectionately known as Ice Cream Sandwich. I literally got this phone a couple of hours ago, so I'm very excited about having it, and I'm just getting used to the new OS, so if I stumble a little bit here, you'll understand why. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is the curved nature of this device. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a slight curve uh, to this uh, to this device. Uh, over here is the volume rocker switch. On the bottom here, you'll notice the micro USB port. Um, over to the right of that is the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Uh, nothing on the top, completely clean on the top. On the right hand side here, what you'll find is the power button as well as these three uh, golden I don't know contacts or buttons however you want to refer to it and uh, from what I understand that's for uh, power charging uh, additional accessories so that's what that's all about you'll notice how clean the whole screen is uh, you folks probably know the tech specs of this already uh, it's a 4.65 inch screen um, dual core 1.2 gigahertz CPU, 1 gig of RAM. Um, you already see here is a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, um, 5 megapixel camera on the back. Uh, this supports up to 1080p uh, video. And uh, one thing that I think is worth mentioning is that this is the GSM version of the phone and it has uh, pentaband support. Uh, why that's uh, important to note is that this phone would actually work on on, on bands supported by like T-Mobile um, in the U.S., uh, Win Mobile, and Mobile City up here in Canada. That tends not to get a lot of love uh, from uh, from the new devices. So this does have pentaband support, so it work with all the popular networks um, as well as those uh, supporting the AWS band. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this thing turned on. So this is what it looks like uh, turned on. Um, you'll see here, I'll just go ahead and unlock it here. Um, right now I'm on the home screen and what you'll notice is that you can do a search from any one of these uh, home screens. Uh, just for people who are not familiar with uh, Android, uh, this particular device uh, supports up to five home screens. You can't add or subtract any. So, you know, that's another home screen, home screen there. So I'm at the end there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, I can't go anymore. And each one of these home screens, I can obviously uh, customize it to add uh, whatever apps, uh, app icons, uh, widgets, uh, whatever I like, I can customize the home screen to whatever I want. So if I go here, for example, and I hold on to the screen here, you'll see I'll get settings for changing things like wallpapers, live wallpapers, and so forth. Um, if I go into settings here, you see a whole variety of stuff up in here. And uh, you know, just to show you guys that this is indeed uh, the 4.01 Android version ice cream sandwich, that's what this is here. So it is indeed a Galaxy Nexus. Um, just go back over here and uh, we're back at the settings. One of the cool things that I did notice when I was playing with this earlier is that if you go into the uh, battery settings option here, you'll notice that it actually tries to estimate how much time left you have on your battery. So I have 73% currently on this on this particular charge, which should translate into approximately uh, two and a half hours on battery. But then it shows you um, all the apps and how much uh, of that battery it actually uses. So for example, what it's telling me here is that my screen is using 63% um, of the available uh, battery capacity, if you will. The confusing part to me is, I actually try to add up all these numbers, um, hoping that it would come to 100%, and let me just do here. So 63 plus 16 is 79, 79 plus six is 85, 85 plus four, 89, 89 and three, 92, 92 plus three is 95, 96, 97. So it doesn't quite come to 100%. 
And in certain instances, when I was playing with it earlier, it actually went over 100%. So I'm not too sure why it just doesn't equal to 100% at all times. So that's a question if someone knows about that can leave a comment on my blog later on. So going back home here, I'll just go through some of the um, applications here. So this is the phone. And you know, we see here on two, three. One of the cool things is that if you press the, these three buttons, so in various areas, um, whenever you're in an application, you see these three uh, dots, if you will, um, that are spread vertically. And you click on it, you get additional settings. So in this particular case, it's context sensitive. Here I can add to contact, add a two second pause, and other settings. Um, so these are other settings for the phone application. If I go back here, here, this is where all my contacts are, you know, things like that. Over here is my call log. I haven't made any calls, so there's nothing in my call log right now. So if I go back to phone, this is what the phone application looks like. So I'll go back home here. Again, the aforementioned, these are all my contacts. That's the contacts icon. Look how fast this thing is on the dual core CPU. Now go back here. Um, I'm just going to skip the middle one for just a brief moment, but you go in here and this is your messaging app. So this is where you'll do all your text messaging and other messaging like that. Um, and before I go to this last one, which is really cool, I'm just going to click on this for a second here. And this is your application tray. So you see all your, the, the available applications are on your phone. Now, one of the things that you'll see, and I'm just going here to another area for widgets. So not only do you see your applications, but you'll see also your widgets that you can place on your on your various home screens. And as I said earlier, you have up to five home screens that you can place these uh, application icons and widgets on. Um, a lot's going on here, but you see this icon up here? This is how you get to your Android Marketplace. So it looks like they want to give um, the OS a lot more emphasis on the availability of the Marketplace so you see that's the marketplace there you know you go for apps and again I'm just getting used to how this app works and things like that so pretty cool so far so I'm just gonna go back home here go back into the, my application uh, tray the other thing that's whoops I just turned it off by accident let me just get back in there now Let's say I want to put a couple of icons on the tray. So I'm going to choose these two uh, messaging apps here. There's one called Messenger and one called Messenger. So I'm just going to hold down here. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Hold down here and I'm going to drag that to that home screen there. Go back in my apps here, hold down the second one. I'm also going to put that on my home screen. Remember, I can do that in each one of these five home screens. Now let's say this starts to get full, and this is gonna be similar to what iOS has introduced uh, not all that long ago, is the idea of folders. So if I, just like if you're familiar with the Apple iPhone and the iOS or the iPad, you just drop an icon on top of it to create a folder. And in that folder now, you have uh, the two icons in there, if not more, and I can rename that folder to whatever I want. So I can call this, let's say, messaging. So if I want to put all my messaging apps together. So now I have a folder. So I thought that's pretty cool. And, and something uh, I suppose that Google has borrowed from iOS. These guys just borrow from each other. So uh, no big deal there. Again, you have your notification tray. And if you're familiar with iOS, you notice they've now introduced a notification area, which they took from the Android side. So these guys just swap ideas all the time. Um, so you'll see there, um, and that's really that. Um, here is the browser. So that's where it opens up here. This is the various tabs that I have open. So if you click on the plus here, you, have, you get another tab. And if I just scroll down, so these are all the tabs I currently have open. So if I skip over here, this is uh, Samsung's uh, mobile website. Scroll down. You know, this is uh, my own website, Gadget Insane. So you see that going on over here. 
some shameless uh, self-promotion there. Now let's say you want to close some of these tabs. Check this out. This is very similar to what takes place uh, in WebOS or in RIMS World BBX where you don't want something, just get rid of it. Don't like that? Look how I just swipe off some of these tabs. I think that's pretty darn cool. Very smooth, very clean. And I just think it's, it's, it, it, they've implemented that very well. Um, so that's something I kind of like there. Let me go back home. So you've seen that. Let me show you this multitasking button on the far right here. So if I click on this, this is how I can switch between my applications. So I can go to my phone app here, click my, my multitasking button there, go to the market. And this phone is just amazing. How it just allows you to flip from application to application, my contacts and so forth. Now, remember I was showing you how to get rid of certain apps. Let's say you have apps that are misbehaving or apps you want to close or, you know, I'm not too sure if memory eventually runs out. I'm sure it does and you just want to get rid of some stuff. Again, you just swipe it off the screen. So I want to get rid of the market app. Look how I just do that. Get rid of Google Plus, get rid of my contacts. And, and, and look how clean and responsive the OS is. You know, get rid of my Gmail, let's say. You know, so I really like this. Very clean. And that's really about it. Not too sure what much more I can show you. I guess I can show you the camera. Whoops. So that's the camera here. I'm not going to take any picture or anything like that. Uh, you know, you know, it's look. This here is just the place where you want to focus. I don't know if you guys saw the green button there. It's a little awkward for me, but you know, that's your front facing camera. So if you want to switch between um, back and front, you can do that. This here, if you want to take, you know, 1080p video, and of course, you know, I can swap it around, portrait, it doesn't really matter. You know, your record button, I can zoom in, zoom out, you know, you get the picture, <laughs> no pun intended. Camera, it just switches back and forth. I haven't figured out what this one is, maybe it's panorama, not too sure what that's uh, about. I'm going to have to figure out what, what this function does, but it's obviously an additional feature of the camera application. So... This is all good so far. So again, you might see that there, and this is how you focus on the object that you want to take a picture of. So zoom in, zoom out, stuff like that, all right? So, so now I've just gotten out of that. And again, if I were to click the button, I can very quickly go back to my camera app, as you can see there, all right? So let me just uh, escape out of that. So I think what have we covered? I think we've covered the phone. We've covered the home screens application tray. I've gone through with you a little bit about the browser and folders. I think that's really about it. Don't want to overdo it on the video, but just want to give you an impression of the speed of the OS. You know, I, I guess I can show you the browser and just like in iOS, you can, well, this is the mobile app. So that's probably wasn't a good example to use. Um, and I don't really have a good example now, but you know, see pinch to zoom and things like that. I mean, phones really, there you have it folks. So the, again, welcome to the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Thanks for watching. Gadget Insane. Peace out.